My name is Patrick, but you can call me 26. And what you're going to do today is we are going to find out which AI model is best for programming with regards to iOS, right? We're going to put Gemini, Claude, and ChatGPT against each other uh, in increasingly difficult challenges to figure out which is the best at programming with regards to iOS, right? Before we get to today's business, you could have a look at my course that is the e-commerce full stack application. And what we build is iStore and iStore, we build the front end at the back end. And iStore does use Swift data. We use Swift data in uh, persisting our cart. So whenever you close the app, we save the contents of what you want to get into um, a cart. And in this cart, which also has a map, you can pick the location like so and do that. And uh, this is persisted using Swift data. And also among our cuts, we have favorites, right? So we have our favorites here and you could save the favorites and the favorites are products that you like that you would want to maybe go back and later on buy. And this also uses Swift data to save our particular favorites, right? So we do that. And also on top of it, we figure out how we can work with um, observable, the observable macro when you're dealing with Swift data. So all these are projects that we actually implement in this application. If you'd like to see the complete project, have a look at the link in the description. If you, um, you're going to see the 26 our project in in its entirety plus the source code. If you would like to see the first twelve hours of the project, they're available on my uh, on my page on my on this channel, right? So have a look at that. Now let's get to the business. Let's today. get to it, right? So let me move myself out of the way, and we start with our first challenge, right? Now this challenge has been solved a bunch of times, and it's about creating a Pomodoro timer like the one you can see on your screen that I normally use to study and do work with, right? So basically what it is, is that you can create a Pomodoro timer and um, the user should have the ability to change the time periods when the timer runs in increments of five minutes. So for example, if you do want to work in 25 minute blocks, you can work in 10 minutes blocks. After each work period, a user should get a five minute rest period. So afterwards you get a five minute re rest period. A user should be able to pause and reset the timer, right? So after you start running the timer, you should be able to pause and reset it. And then we want everything controlled from a manager which uses the observable macro, right? So I've found that you have to tell it that you have to say observable macro in order to make it work exactly the way you want, right? If you just say observable, it might get you an observable object, right? We want the observable macro to control everything, right? So that's what we want. And the very first contender is going to be, um, the one that I think is going to come in second, uh, which is going to be this, right? But I may be wrong, right? So let's come and paste it here. Paste it here to Claude. And let's see what Claude has to say about it, right? This is Claude 3.7. I'm just going to take 3.7 Sonnet rather than 3.7 Sonnet thinking, right? And I am going to use um, Copilot, right? For Xcode, right? The Copilot for Xcode to run things, right? So let's run it and see. What happened? The code, I just copied the code. It decided to put everything into one file, which is the first problem, right? I would have preferred it if it put the manager in a separate file, but that's okay. I've just copied everything and we have our first problem, right? This is the most simple problem I could come up with. And we already see remaining work and it is trying to access it without, uh, without having access to all stored properties, right? So that is the issue here. And um, unfortunately, this is a no go, right? So this is a this is a minor problem. I'm sure that it could fix it. Okay, so let me just show you what it did earlier. So this was what Claude did earlier, right? And you can see that this is actually what it did. Let's just run it so that you can see what the initial build, right? With the same prompt, it gave us a different result, right? And I don't know why that is. So it depends on maybe the prompt. So originally, this is what Claude did when I tested it off screen, right? But now when I test it and start recording, it apparently gets um, stage stage fright and can't code, right? So it did create this perfectly um, as I set it up, right? And you can see that you can reduce the work duration in groups of five all the way to five minutes and you can increase it maybe to 60 right so i okay i don't i don't know the upper limit right and i already tested it by checking whether or not like i ran it for five minutes so you can run it you can pause it and you can reset it right and when you reset it it goes to rest but i don't dock points on that so depending on how you want to look at it claude did pass it earlier uh before we tested this right but when we actually were rolling the cameras it was unable to do it when the lights were brightest right okay let's go to the second one now the second one is going to be um, Gemini Pro. Let's just copy the code, come here, paste it, hit that, and see what happens, right? Of the Gemini Pro, and we can see it work. Let's see 
Let's try it out. It does tick down. It's less prettier than the the clawed one that worked, but it seems like it works. We can pause, we can reset, and when you reset, it doesn't go to the next time period, which is going to be the rest, like the um, like Claude did. And what we could do is we could reduce the time to five minutes, right? So we do, we do see as though it works. However, we need to test it and make sure that it actually it actually does stick down to five and after five after the five after the work period we go to the rest period let's see whether that works right so let me just run it and then come back at the end okay of it. it does work as advertised right so we have to put give the point to gemini in this particular test gemini has done a lot better than um than claude has right claude but also claude had a prettier Claude had a prettier interface, right? But Gemini did actually work better. Right? In order to make them as fair as possible, in each case, I start with a completely new project so that the um, the um, the sidebar, or rather, not Alex sidebar, but the chat GPT companion, right, uh, for Xcode, uh, also has a new context, right? So I don't continue with the same project for each single, uh, for each model, I create a new project, right? So we call this PMDQ3 and we create that. And that's going to take a couple of minutes and that is created, right? Now, this is going to be a completely new project, right? To give it the best possible chance. And what we want to do is we want to go get our code like so. And what we want to do next is now try, I think O4 Mini would be the best, right? O4 Mini would be the best. So let's do that, right? So enter that and let us come back when it is done. And um, one thing you will notice is that O4 Mini did exactly what I, I, I was afraid it would do, right? It confuses observable macro with observable object, right? So it does that. So O4 Mini uh, automatically fails the test and Gemini is the winner. We didn't need more than one round, right? So you see it comes here and says state object. It was supposed to use the macro and not do this, right? Uh, so it actually mixes, um, it mixes the observable objects and the observable macro, right? So it tries to use both. Um, which it shouldn't do. And uh, that is not a problem that we had when we were dealing with the with um, the other two, right? So Ofo Mini is behind the others. But let's try and correct that by, by telling it, use the observable macro, not observable object. Let's see if this does improve things. Okay, so. Here it is, right? And we say use observable macro, not observable object. And guess what? Same mistake, right? Still comes here, say state object. And that doesn't seem like it's working, right? So it doesn't seem um, using the uh, this observable, telling it observable here, it thinks that you're talking about the manager, which it does. But when it comes to the content view, it does still use state object, right? And it still can't get that you're supposed to just use the state rather than the state object there since you're using the observable macro, right? So clearly, O4 Mini is markedly worse, right? Now I'm going to assume O4 Mini is the most powerful. I don't know whether uh, between 4.1 and O4 Mini, right? Maybe let's try 4.1, right? Um, the way ChatGPT normally names its things, it's a, it can be a bit confusing figuring out which is the best among it, right? So O4 Mini isn't it. Let's try the same with a GPT 4.1. Maybe that is better. When it comes to GPT 4.1, right? It immediately launches into the rest, right? It doesn't stop. Like when the work period ends, it immediately goes and starts the rest period, right? So that's how it works, and we can see that it works pretty pretty well, right? So that I would at this point I'd put the score at one GPT um, GPT four point one one uh, Gemini one. Let's go to the next challenge. The next challenge is pretty straightforward. Right, we want to create a map in Swift UI with an annotation in the middle. The annotation should have a label of the actual place the annotation is on. The user should be able to drag the annotation around the map. After user is done dragging, the annotation 
uh, dragging the annotation, the label should show the new location of the annotation. Use only Swift UI and not UI Kit, right? So I wanted to do it all in Swift UI and UI Kit. I'm not going to tell it anymore, like um, if it wants to use observable object, whatever it wants to use, right? So this is one of the videos I have made, actually, how to do this, right? So let's see if it can do it. And we are going to start with, let's see, GPT 4.1, right? So let's do that and see how GPT 4.1 would handle that. Okay, now the issue is that the the manager does not conform to identifiable. I'm just going to ask GPT 4.1 preview to fix that and hit that and we see if it can fix it. And let us do that. Let's just copy it, right? So you see draggable annotation manager. Well, it's basically just adding, is it just adding identifiable to it, right? It looks like it's just adding identifiable, right? Okay. Or rather, let's just copy it because I'm seeing it's also putting a UUID, right? That can be identified. Okay, that's good. Let's see whether that works. Okay, two warnings, no errors, right? Let's see, what are the warnings about? Okay, let's see. Let's do the pro, right? Map annotation was um, deprecated. I'm not going to complain about deprecations. Probably took um, map with a content builder. Fine, let's see if it works, right? So um, predictably, it went to, I'm going to think this is, uh, the mission district. Where is this? Is this um, is this San Francisco or New York? One of them, right? So it's either San Francisco or New York, right? Yeah, it's San Francisco. San Francisco. I was going to go. Yeah, it's San Francisco, right? So that's going to be the name. Uh, S Van Ness Avenue. Let's try and drag it. And the drag, I know the exact problem, right? Actually, we do face a similar problem um, when we are building the app on, on on a video in my channel. You can see the problem. Something to do with the scope where you're supposed to put the draggable. It's supposed to be, uh, or rather I use geometry manager when I was doing it. It doesn't use geometry manager, right? So it's doing it some other way. There are many ways to skin a cat and it's using a different way. And we can see that it doesn't work, right? It does move eventually, but it doesn't move according to the user's finger, right? So this is partially done. I'm guessing you could like deal with the offset, right? And make sure that it does move a bit, right? Yes, so it does move, but it doesn't work the way we were doing it, right? So how I got over it is I used, I did use uh, the geometry space I was using, right? So we changed it from global to local. And then um, the the difference in where you're pressing and where the, the annotation is wasn't too different, right? So that's one way we could have a, that's one way you could solve it. It's, it, um, it does notice, um, I tried to tell it that the user's, uh, where the user presses is not where it's being translated to on the map when you're moving it around, right? And I also run it on the simulator to make sure that this is not the problem, right? So you see where the user is pressing on the map and where the the pin is is not being translated directly, right? So there's a way we did it and we used some methods from iOS 17. But after chatting it, with it for a while, all the suggestions it's making uh, making the situation worse, right? So the suggestions, if you copy this and put it here, it doesn't work and it's not working the way it is. It's supposed to, right? So I'm guessing that this is, I'd say that this is something like 70% of the way there. And uh, there are a few things you could do with iOS 17 to fix this and um, and fix it indeed, it would, right? So this, I'd say that this is uh, more of a 70. Let us now try, because um, Claude was knocked out, let's try Gemini Pro with the same problem. See, I copied it, there was an error. I tried, let's see, let's see. Let's look at the error. And it does make a very basic error, Gemini Pro. Should do better. So let's just tell it that and see if it can fix that. And give it a second, it's pretty fast. Okay, so that should be that, right? So let's just copy this and see if this actually works, right? Let's copy this, come here and see, right? Okay, do you have no errors, right? Let's hope this works. Lots of comments, which is good. And for some reason, all of them default to San Francisco. That's negative 1.22, right? I'm sure that's San Francisco, right? Mm, let's see, and what's the, we had one warning about using, okay, about, uh, we had one warning that this will not conform. Okay, wow, a crash, right? We had a warning previously when we were using, um, 
4.1, right? We had a warning when we were using 4.1 about um, it was using some methods that have, have been uh, deprecated in 17, right? So, but that's okay. It still worked, right? So we are getting a crash here, right? So with this, we are getting a crash. Fail to launch. Okay, let's try launching it on the simulator and see. Extension declares conformance and let's see. Let's just put it on the simulator and see what happens. Okay, it's working, right? Okay, the simulator works, right? On the simulator, it works. Uh, on the preview, it crashed for some reason, right? Let's try moving it. And you see the problem is when you move it, the map moves rather than the annotation, right? So this does the exact wrong thing, right? It's actually worse, right? So if you try and pick up the annotation, you find that it's actually the map is moving, right? We're moving the map and then the annotation is there, right? So it sort of works, but not in the way you expect it to, right? So... <laughs> This is a very interesting thing it does. What it does is that when you move, the map moves around and then the annotation or the label, which I said should be, did I say the label should be above? I say the label, um, have a label, the annotation should, okay, fine, this is okay. It's fine how it's done it. However, what it does is that we're not moving the annotation. Like when you do this, you're actually moving the map. The annotation should float on the map rather than the map, right? This is actually one way of doing it and <laughs> It's not the way I do it, right? Because if you grab this annotation and you moved it to a particular location, uh, this is not exactly how we do it. And I'd be hard pressed to say which way is better, right? I'd say in my opinion, the, the 4.1 was better, right? But this actually does work a lot. Okay, I wouldn't say it's a lot better, but it just works in a different way. And instead of moving, the, it moves the... Um, the map instead of the annotation, right? So in this instance, we could say 4.1 was better. It was still wrong, but better, right? So that is the case. And just for good measure, I know um, it failed the previous test. Let's also try it on, um, on Claude and see how it does. I have just asked Claude the exact same question and uh, it is making up the view. And um, I think it's ready. It really made a mistake because I can see that it is using, um, is it using UI view? Because I've seen a UI view somewhere, right? Let's see, drag gesture in view. Uh, no, that's okay. Okay, let's just try it out, right? So let's copy this. And if you're interested, there's a video on how you can do this. Uh, I made it a couple of months ago, uh, how we do this, right? So let's just do that and see, let's try building it. We have a warning and this is going to be, okay, I do not know what the matter is right let's just clean build the folder uh clean build folder like so so okay there's one error um what's the error let's just see initializer must have optional okay pretty rookie mistake let's copy that try and fix it and see how it does it right okay so here is a fix right additionally there's another issue with your code is deprecated let's update it so it's basically failed it because it's using the ui application window i said in particular let us not use that the issue here is that um even before we sort out the other errors right the other errors that are stopping it from running right uh but before that we already see that it is using uh the it's using stuff from uh ui kit and that was specifically something i said it shouldn't do right I did say uh, use only Swift UI and not UI Kit, right? So it has delved deep into UI Kit, meaning that Claude has not done well. So if we rank our, according to the two tasks that we've given it, I would say that the one that did it the best was 4.1, uh, followed by Gemini, which I think should actually be the winner. But yes, in all fairness, 4.1 was the best, Gemini uh, was second, and Claude, which I thought would be second, was actually third, right? Cause um, it has been unable to finish this particular problem uh, while the other ones did a lot a lot better job on it. And um, off camera, it was able to solve the Pomodoro problem. But when I tried to do it on camera, it was unable to replicate what it had done, right? So it did make a few changes to the original code that it had suggested. And it, uh, when the cameras were rolling, it was not able to do it, right? And the worst, the absolute worst was uh, one of these minis, right? So the O4, uh, the OFO Mini, that one is maybe something you should not look at. And it's probably trained on very old data because it kept um, it kept trying to use Swift object, right? I know it kept trying to use state object, even when you tell it about macro, when you tell it about using the macro. So maybe stay away from the minis. 
and uh gpt 4.1 preview is good and maybe for i didn't use sonnet thinking right uh, give it uh select the cloud 3.7 sonnet thinking because um gemini pro also has a thinking ability and uh, it's not selectable right so maybe if you're using sonnet consider using the sonnet thinking right so thank you for watching subscribe to the channel and i will see you in the next video